All right, so uh, good afternoon, viewers. Uh, today we have uh, a special guest, uh, Caitlin, um, who is coming to share her experiences with us uh, from, from Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. Uh, I met Caitlin earlier last year when she was preparing for uh, her uh, MPH uh, program. Uh, she's originally from the UK and we had quite an extensive interaction and I thought that um, hearing from her would provide you know, some perspective to prospective applicants who really are thinking of applying to uh, you know, schools of public health. So uh let's let's just get straight into our conversation Caitlin, welcome to uh chat with mentees uh we are glad to have you thank you so much it's lovely to be here yeah so uh, i i know that the last conversation we had was when you were deciding between uh hopkins and harvard and uh finally you you settled on uh harvard and as i said that uh, uh, there wouldn't be a mistake between any of the two, but before before we we we, we begin, I want you to perhaps tell us something brief about yourself, your background, uh, your early education life in the UK, and you know what you've been doing prior to uh, enrolling in Harvard. Yeah, absolutely. So as you said, I'm from the UK um, and I am a medical doctor. Um, I grew up in the south of England, but then went to university in London. Uh, I went to University College London to study medicine. And then I stayed in London and I did my foundation training as a doctor there. So they're essentially like the intern years that we have to do in the UK. And mm -hmm. I worked in uh, two hospitals there. The last one was the Royal Free Hospital, which is quite a, a kind of big tertiary centre. And I did an academic uh, program in virology. Uh, so alongside my clinical uh, training, I also did four months uh, doing research as well. So um, I've, I've had kind of experience both on the clinical side of medicine, but also had a lot of experience in, in the research side mm -hmm. where I was really, uh, lacking experience was on the kind of public health side. Okay. kind of what's in here really yeah yeah uh it, you 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 seem to have like a very extensive uh profile from clinical to uh research uh and now to more of a public health oriented uh journey but um for people who may be listening to us who are perhaps trying to apply to schools of public health in the uk uh some people will be wondering what really inspired you to to study abroad right so typically when we say international students uh, anybody who is going outside of their country to 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 mm. pursue graduate school so what was the real motivation for you to uh you know try your hands on uh schools outside of the uk mm. um i think there's there's kind of two answers to that question there's the the uh, retrospective answer and then there's mm -hmm. what actually happened and I suppose in retrospect, you can fit things into a nice little narrative, um, which would be that I, that I wanted more experience in public health, but I also wanted a kind of broad range of experience, which I think mm -hmm. the US universities gave more so than the, the uh, UK universities. But then I suppose on top of that was also that I'd lived in London for the last eight years. So, so to be honest, I think I wanted to go outside of London <laughs> And I, uh, the three universities that I applied for were John Hopkins, Harvard, and the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, uh, yeah. which is obviously in London. And I think um, lots of factors played into my decision, but uh, part of it was the fact that I wanted uh, a year doing something else somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I've been in London for so long the idea of moving abroad was quite exciting. But I think, to, so that's definitely one reason, but I think also the kind of experience that you gain from studying abroad is so invaluable. And that's not just things you learn in the classroom, that's the people you meet, the you experiences meet. you have, the different yeah. cultures that you have. Um, so yeah, so definitely, definitely glad that I went uh, abroad. 
yeah yeah i think that that makes that makes uh, a lot of sense especially if you're really uh thinking about expanding your network um you know uh, going outside your 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 home country is, is perhaps one of the best ways to to achieve that um so i want us to to talk about your um your journey uh, whilst you're applying f- to uh the graduate programs um how, how did you go about I, I know like you you were admitted to harvard hopkins and then the the london school of tropical uh hygiene and tropical medicine which is also like uh, a very reputable public health institution uh, how did you go about selecting your recommenders for your application uh, were there any particular qualities or experiences you are looking for in them mm. yeah so it's a good question um i think for me it was definitely a balance between getting people who've got the big fancy titles and lots of letters after their name and people who genuinely know you um and i think i was kind of fortunate to have uh to know people who were both professors and had kind of fancy titles but also knew me well enough and were incentivized to, to make an effort on the letter of recommendations. I think I was quite fortunate with that. But I think in terms of prospective uh, applicants, I would definitely fall in, I would definitely recommend choosing people who are willing to spend time to help you on your letter of recommendation. Um, but, but having said that, I think it's also important to note um, that when people are writing your letter for a recommendation if you present to them all of the amazing things that you've done in a kind of bullet point form so they can summarize it nicely that's also quite helpful yeah yeah so um you made a very important uh, point that uh you you select people who are willing to write you a, le- a recommendation letter that's perhaps one of the strongest points because um if you approach anybody who says i'm busy or i may not be able to write you a strong recommendation that is a very red flag um uh, those are the kind of uh recommendation letters you, you don't want in your application um i think that that point has been uh, fairly made um but how about your statement of purpose i know like statement of purpose is perhaps one of the single important documents uh, or pieces of your application package um how did you approach your your statement of purpose yeah i think so this is this is such an important point it's something that i definitely kind of stressed about when i was applying and i know that other people did as well um i suppose for me the first thing that was important before I got into the nitty gritty was understanding mm-hmm. the narrative. So that really is where have I been and where am I going? Mm-hmm. And it's slightly difficult because most people who take a master's of public health don't know where they're going because that's part of the reason why they do it. So that can be <laughs> a bit challenging. Yeah. But I think the process is understanding more about yourself and what you want from a career and what you want to take from masters and then trying to distill that and then weave that into a story and then alongside that you've got to have your story but you've also got to show all the amazing achievements that you've done mm-hmm. so that you can be selected so it's about kind of integrating those both so i think firstly starting on your narrative but then also simultaneously thinking about what achievements that you've done and picking out let's say five, but maybe only including three or four in your letter of recommendation, I found, found was quite useful. Yeah. And as all, all of these things kind of start and early and slowly chipping away, and then, you know, you might be on the bus and you might be thinking, oh, that's really interesting. <laughs> that yeah. Rather than two days before the deadline, kind of racking your brains, thinking, oh, what did I do? So yeah, starting early, thinking about a narrative and also thinking about some key achievements that you can weave into your narrative yeah do, do, do you remember the number of versions you had uh for your statement of purpose uh because i know like most of the as you said uh you've you 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 have your draft and you think that will perhaps be the final draft and then you wake up and you know something clicks i said no i have to add this 
uh how many times did you have to go back to your statement of purpose and make changes yeah that's a good question a lot of times is, is the answer to that question um i you know i think i had have say maybe even up to kind of 10 drafts mm-hmm. and, and i think it, three of them have the word final in them um, <laughs> they're, they're not actually the final and then it's this one really is the final. yeah so it is this one um so Kind of slowly chipping away. I think there does come to come a point where you are just changing the word order and things that really matter. So there, there, there are, you know, there are too many times that you can edit things. But I think kind of slowly chipping away is the technique that I find useful. Yeah, yeah, that is that is very true. And I think it, three of them have the word final in them. Um, but they're, <laughs> they're not actually the final. And then it's this one really. Is the final. Yeah. So it is this one. Um, so it's kind of slowly chipping away. I think there does come to come a point where you are just changing the word order and things that really matter. So there, there, there are, you know, there are too many times that you can edit things. But I think kind of slowly chipping away is the technique that I find useful. Yeah, yeah, that is that is very true. Um, uh, how about your how about your resume? Are there any particular strategies you you used uh to to make sure that your resume uh at least is is you know stands out uh were there any uh intentional uh strategies or decisions you you made uh, for example to say that um i'm intentionally keeping my resume be between a certain number of pages or you didn't really worry about those those things mm-hmm. um yeah that's another kind of question that keeps that crops up quite a lot um so for, for me so i the, my kind of immediate friends and family who kind of saw the first draft of of my kind of personal statement and uh, resume they aren't uh, kind of clinically orientated nor are they academically orientated they kind of done lots of business things so they all they always told me just one you know one page uh, for your cv which i found quite difficult so i ended up doing two pages which i think is a little bit better uh, especially because i have for example publications which take up you know because mm-hmm. they're so long and so i ended up with two pages but yeah as you said it, it is difficult because you've got to have a balance between having it short and punchy, and then also trying to explain the key skills that you've got from each experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the way that to do that is with all of these things, um, kind of redrafting, comparing versions, and also showing them to other people. And if someone else reads this, and it, probably especially helpful if they're not from the same field that you're from, if mm-hmm. they read it and they're confused or there's too much information, it's, you need to go back and, and edit it. And review it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly yeah okay all right um so let's all right so let's let's move to your decision making process right um i know like you you applied to three schools you got into all the three schools uh but before the the point of deciding before you got to that point of deciding how was the like your overall uh journey of the application process uh how challenging was it were there any particular hurdles that you faced in terms of maybe uh your recommenders you know not submitting on time or your your transcript not being delivered on time how how was the overall experience like um, well, both of those things happened to me, so definitely some hurdles <laughs> to play. Um, and I think, you know, you everyone's going to have hurdles on their journey, but it's just mm-hmm. about setting up time to kind of deal with that. I think, to be honest, the overall obstacle that I faced was not really knowing what my narrative was, not really mm-hmm. understanding what get from the MPH which is fine and I think that's okay and that's one of the reasons why you do the MPH but I think throughout this process writing the personal statements and and kind of asking people to write the letters of recommendation and all of that 
it really made me think about what I want to get from this. And I found that initially quite difficult, but in retrospect, I thought that was incredibly valuable. Mm -hmm. Because then I started the MPH and I really had a clear idea, actually, I, I want to gain, for me, I want to gain some kind of key quantitative skills. I want to have an idea about what career I want to do. Um, and I want to be able to kind of combine that with, with public health. So, so those yeah. are the kind of key uh, aims that I that I got out from that process. But yeah, definitely um, I had problems getting my academic transcripts, um, you know, ref, ref, referees not replying in time, all of that type of stuff definitely happened. Um, but I think because I'd set enough, uh, set aside enough time to deal with that, it wasn't uh, too much of an issue. Yeah, yeah. I think it's uh, it's over. I mean, the 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 amount of uh, time you put in your application sometimes reflect the results you get, right? If if you if you go through the process yourself, you go through the motion, you make sure you are dedicating time to the entire process. Uh, most of the time, it, it becomes rewa a rewarding journey. Yeah. Um, I, and I mean, for someone who got admission to all the schools you apply to i've encountered a lot of people be in the same situation i myself was in a, in a similar situation a couple of years ago and sometimes uh, you know that is the point that becomes very challenging deciding where to go right you have all these incredible schools and you have to choose only one you can't do a, a, you know one semester here or one term here move to the other school and, and transfer to the other school so how how did you make your decision how was your decision process like yeah definitely so i think you know obviously a very fortunate position to be in and i'm very grateful that i had the opportunity to be accepted by all three schools and um, but as you say you know very difficult um because the differences between the schools in many respects are quite marginal and um, i think uh, again i set aside quite a long time to think about things and i think that helped me make a gut decision um because mm -hmm. it kind of, the decisions i let i let kind of i thought about them for a while and then when i came back to answering the questions i think i had a bit more of an intuition of what i wanted to do um, and then I think also I reached out to, to people who had been in the same situation yourself yeah. included, who mm -hmm. gave really good advice uh, and also put me in touch with some really helpful people. And I think that made so much of a difference as well to understand what people got from their degrees, how they found their degrees useful and what advice they would give. And then I kind of amalgamated everyone's uh, <laughs> opinion and uh -huh. In and then let it settle for a bit, left it for a few weeks, and then I think the decision to go to Harvard kind of came quite naturally from that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if, if you have to quantify the number of days you spend or the number of hours you spend brainstorming uh, either to go to Harvard or Hopkins, uh, how, how long do you think that the decision making uh, process took? Yeah, that's a good question. I suppose so a lot of it would be, like I said, just when you're on the bus or going to the shopping or something, sometimes you just think about life, don't you? So, so I suppose some of it was that, but then I, I did I did definitely kind of write down pros and cons for every place and I discussed mm -hmm. it with friends and family. Um, so, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how many hours, but quite a few hours, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, few. Yeah, so, um, I mean, now you're at Harvard, before you got there, uh, I mean, in your decision-making process, you made mention that you 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 made some points uh, about the pros and cons. Uh, what were your top three pros for for uh, you know an institution like Harvard? What was your first three pros? I'll take the first one out of your list: reputation, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, and, and that, yeah, that did definitely have something to say. But yeah, I, I suppose so. I suppose there's the kind of um, the academic side of things. So mm -hmm. that's things like classes, what research opportunities there are. Yeah, um, yeah. And I'll, I'll go back. To, I'll discuss it in a sec. But so that, that's number one. And um, number two was more. 
the kind of nondescript other stuff. And what I mean by that is kind of networking opportunities, the people that you meet there, the career services, kind of things that seem initially quite little when they build up. Yeah. Being quite an important part of your experience. And then I think the third as well was the location. So, mm-hmm. so I guess just going back to, to number one and the academic side of things, um, what I think from I'm speaking to yourself and lots of other people um, and doing a lot of research online, I think Hopkins actually offers maybe a slightly better quality of class. And, mm-hmm. um, pr- and again, this is just so generalised every single sub-discipline within public health is going to be different. Yeah, what I understood, yeah. especially kind of epidemiology and biostatistics, which I'm interested in, Johns Hopkins offer perhaps a slightly more rigorous program, slightly, slightly, slightly better kind of research opportunities. So I suppose Hopkins took it for that point. Um, but obviously, you know, Harvard's still good. And then mm-hmm. the second point, um, the second point, uh, the kind of more of a broad range in education, I think Harvard, just by virtue of the fact that it offers lots of different degrees in different graduate schools, that allowed the opportunity to kind of network a bit more, to, to broaden my horizons. Yeah. Um, so I think that kind of took it on that front. Um, and then finally, in terms of location, um, people just told me that kind of Boston and Cambridge is really lovely. So I mm-hmm. thought that on that front as well. Yeah, yeah. I think those are those are very legitimate points um, uh, because you know, oftentimes uh, people don't think about, don't put those priorities first. Uh, so, if 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 I'm to ask, for example, uh, a student from uh, a different uh, region why they perhaps picked. Um, a certain school over the other one thing that might probably pop up in their top three reasons it's scholarships right so in your decision in your decision making um scholarships were not part of your uh of your rubrics for deciding whether to go to hopkins or to go to harvard um yeah, well, I was fortunate enough to be offered a scholarship for both Harvard and Hopkins. So, um, kind of on balance, I decided not to include that in my rubric. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So that that, that kind of cancelled out, um, yeah. and then your your face with that go to Harvard. Um, yeah, well, I was fortunate enough to be offered a scholarship for both Harvard and Hopkins. So, um, kind of on balance i decided not to include that in my rubric yeah yeah that makes sense that makes sense so that that, that kind of cancelled out um yeah. and then you're you're faced with that the true uh you know the true uh comparative analysis that you had to do i think that was that was fair um so now you're at hopkins how is the experience like well i mean what were your first impression uh, at Harvard and the city, you made mention of the location. Uh, how are you liking it? Um, I, I absolutely love it. I, have to say. <laughs> I really, really love it. And I'm, I'm so sad that I'm almost a third of the way through. Part of me wants to take it all over again. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. Harvard is obviously in Cambridge, which is a bit north of Boston. I am. Uh, situated kind of halfway between the both and the school of public health is actually in in boston not in Cambridge. okay mm-hmm. it's kind of a mix of everywhere really but i love that i think i that means that i get a taste of boston but also get to live in cambridge and do all the fun kind of harvard stuff mm-hmm. um it's a really lovely city um it's still you know boston still is a, is a big city but it's not quite the scale of london which i think is quite nice having lived in london for eight years to yeah. else. and it's just good fun being a student again um i know i've already been a student for the last you know for six <laughs> years in medical school and this is my seventh year but it's good fun and it's it's i like having um the kind of autonomy to decide my day and what classes i do and how much work i put into things mm-hmm. um, and i think that's quite in, uh, and quite a privilege really yeah um but i mean uh 
staying in, uh, in in London for so many years and having most part of your uh, education in, in 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 the UK, uh, how how different is it to adjust in terms of culture? Uh, you know, uh, how different is it? Hmm. I have to say it's actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. I think because uh, Harvard and Cambridge and, and Boston as well are so multicultural. There are people from everywhere there, yeah. especially in the context of the graduate schools. People mm-hmm. really are all, all, all over the world. Um, so it's kind of, it's really up to you how much you, because, you know, regardless what country you're from, there will be someone from the same country there and you can spend all your time with them doing things that you would do in your home country or you can you know, go and hang out with the Americans or you can go and meet people from totally new places. Yeah. So it's really up to you and how you're comfortable. But for me, I found it kind of really easy to fit in. Um, I've got a lot of British friends so we do tend to hang out with each other. But I also okay. have American friends in lots of different countries. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, really yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it seems, it seems that you, you, you're truly having uh, a good transition. Um, so, I mean, how, how is the, uh, for example, um, living conditions in terms of accommodation? Are you close to school uh, or like how long do you have to commute to school? So I use the city bikes, which are called blue bikes here. Um, and it takes me about 25 minutes to cycle in and it would take me probably about 35 minutes to take. There's a free shuttle bus that you can get. So, so okay. I, swear, I live in Central Square in Cambridge, kind of the southern bit of Cambridge, which is in between Cambridge where Harvard campus is and where um, Fenway, which is where the School of Public Health is. Okay. Um, so it takes me about 25 minutes to cycle there. We'll see how much slower I get when the snow comes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have to say, in terms of uh, kind of tra- transport, maybe maybe I've just been a bit spoiled being in London. But the, the public transport here isn't, isn't fantastic. But biking is is a really good way to get around. And in terms of accommodation, it's very very expensive. Unfortunately, it's very difficult. <laughs> yeah, I think that is um, one. That is yeah, one of the reasons one... I considered when I spoke with people. Uh, they they said. Uh, it's accommodation is so expensive that um, if you don't have enough to afford it, you you can't you can't stay yeah. there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I, I know you have only nine months. That's incredibly short. Uh, but apart from, for example, academic work, uh, what other activities are you engaged in um, at, at Harvard? like student events what what other types of activities are you engaged in yeah so uh i am a member of the harvard uh the harvard chan running club and the harvard chan hiking club which are both kind of student-led organizations mm-hmm. um and harvard are quite good at this i'm, I'm sure hopkins probably do the same where um, there's a small fund available for people to set up their own student societies, especially yeah. if they're related to in some kind of sphere. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I do kind of do a lot of that. It's a really lovely way to meet people. I really enjoy running. I, we actually run as a group the Cambridge Half Marathon last week, which was wow. really lovely. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got a PP, so... Oh, great. <laughs> That's great. All right. Um, okay, so... Uh, our last but one segment it's about uh, what you you want to do post um, graduation um, uh, so what I mean what would be your immediate steps after after graduation what are your career goals and how do you plan to put all these degrees together to you know to to move forward in your in, in, in your professional journey well, that is an excellent question and one, truth be told, that I haven't quite figured out the answer to yet. Yeah. But I suppose longer term, uh, I would like to go back to the UK and finish my clinical training in mm-hmm. infectious diseases and I'll become a consultant or um, they call them, you know, you'd call them an attendant, but we call them a consultant in the UK. Um, 
uh, in infectious diseases. Uh, and alongside that, I'd probably take an academic training path where I would dedicate some time to academia. And I'd like to be able to, to be engaged in research that has a direct benefit in the sphere of public health. Um, mm -hmm. Hence using the, the, the um, skills and experience that, that I've got from Harvard. In this shorter term, I haven't quite figured that out yet. I'm thinking about staying on another year in Boston or in the States in general. Um, okay. And doing a non role. Uh, exactly what that looks like, I haven't figured out yet. Mm -hmm. But we shall see. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's one of the... Um, it's one of the decisions that you you have to be making as you go along, right? So you have to, uh, after graduation, that there, there's so much opportunity for you. Uh, but obviously, going back to finish your clinical training should should be on top of of the on top of the priorities. Um, and and I'm glad at least you, you you'll be able you are able to take some time off. Uh, the clinical training to pursue other things which are equally important in 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 your journey um final session would be a series of trivia questions um uh you don't have to answer if you don't want to uh but if you have the answer it will be it will be fun i uh, have only five questions right so I know from the you're from the UK. UK, it's, you know, soccer is like very famous there. Uh, so, what is your favorite soccer team? Oh gosh, <laughs> um, I have to, I do like trivia. Uh, you know, a pub quiz is a classic Thursday night activity in the UK. But unfortunately, I don't know much about sports. Uh, so I, I I used to live near Arsenal. And one of my good friends really supports Arsenal. So, so to give you an answer, I'd say Arsenal, but don't ask me. About this, so don't <laughs> okay, no problem. I think Arsenal, Arsenal is okay. We'll take it like that. Um, and um, so, if 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 you have the if you have the opportunity, or if you could master any skill overnight, or how would it be? That's a good question. If I could master any skill overnight, what would I master? Um, well, I don't know if it's too boring, but maybe something to do with epidemiology. <laughs> <laughs> so I can ace all my exams and not have to work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's fair. You could you could be an epidemiology guru, right? Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so... I mean, you've been at Harvard for for nine months, for almost four months. If 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 someone is visiting campus, uh, what would be your favorite spot to recommend to the person? Well, that's not just a hypothetical question. I've got one of my good friends coming from the UK who's arriving on Wednesday. Great. Um, so where so where will I show him around campus? Well, you've got to do all the the classic the the Harvard Yard and um, kind of the Memorial Hall and all that type of stuff and the Harvard Medical School as well. Um, but um, the, just because I'm British and it's it's a British name, the, the Queen's Head pub, which is underneath the Memorial Hall, serves $5 pints and it's <laughs> quite a good hideout. So Great. probably there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that seems fair anyway so last question if you could travel anywhere in the world right now where would it be oh that's an excellent question um well i'm, I'm due to, to be undertaking a field project in brazil in january mm. so um i suppose that's where my focus on it is on at the moment it's uh it's one of the cities in the Amazon rainforest and we're going to be looking at infectious diseases policies there. So um, if I could get my flights there for free, then I would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not like a fun trip. Um, anyway, uh, I think we're coming close to our, our session. Uh, but before you go, um, what advice would you give other international students, uh, prospective applicants who are... Uh, uh, you know, almost at the end of, of the journey of applying or who are thinking of applying next next academic year to, for example, top 
top programs um what would be some of the advice you would like to to give them yeah so i think this is a really exciting time uh, and i think i just would remind people my you know this is myself one year ago that even though you might be stressed because you don't know whether you're going to get in or you don't know whether to apply or you don't know where to accept this is an exciting opportunity and the world really is your oyster you can do anything that you want if you put your mind to it um so just you be aware of the opportunities that are available to you and find this this time exciting um but also if you can these processes even though they, they're really long and laborious and no one likes writing their personal statement for the tenth time they are really useful not just for getting into the university that you want to get into but mm -hmm. also for having clarity in your mind about where you want to go in life so i think if you can enjoy the process and and, and you will you will realize how useful it is yeah so find out where to enjoy the process uh, you have to be immersed in the process for you to really understand, um, you know, the, the the importance of the results or the outcome that you get. Um, well, thank you so much, Caitlin. Um, we wish you all the best in your journey and hopefully you will get to link up very soon. So all Absolutely. the best and thank you for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. Great. Bye.